Well, build my gallows and build them high Makes a long time climbing before I die I want the chance to spit in his eye well, he gave me balls, but I can see between To a dusty yard and a long gone green They call that freedom, if you know what I mean And I drown my sorrows, but the whiskey's gone I'm sober as good Hello everybody, welcome to uh, Long Bangers. I'm Matty, your host as usual. This is episode 94. Uh, we've got another special guest on for you tonight. So uh, I'll start off with our not quite so special guest. That's John. John, how are you doing? Sorry for putting you down. I said every fucking week. I know. Um, I I'm I'm alright. I'm not going to ask how you are. Why? Because I don't fucking care anymore. <laughs> ah, good, good enough reason. Uh, and we're also joined by uh, current Dundee uh, defender and Hibernian FC legend uh, Liam Fontaine. Liam, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm alright, guys. Thanks for having me on. No, Brilliant. thanks for good to be thanks. here. Thanks very much for coming on. Um, so, Leo, what we'll, we'll do tonight is we'll, we'll just talk to you a wee bit about your career, but particularly about your time at, at uh, Hibs. Um, hopefully you enjoy the, the chat. And then, I don't know if you saw the game yesterday with Hibs and Stranard, did you? I saw bits of it, yeah. Right, bits we'll, of it. We'll, we'll generally can have a wee, a wee chat about the game. Because uh, we won 4-0, there's probably not that much to talk about. So, um, that, that's pretty much the, the setup for the show tonight. So... Uh, Liam, we'll start, start first of all just to ask you about how you got into football in the, the first place. What was your, your first club and how did you get signed? My first professional club. Mm-hmm. First professional club I went to um, was Fulham. Uh, ended up going to Fulham at about I think I was 12 or 13 years old and uh, just got there through basically um, playing for my school, my school borough and my, and my school county and the old school way of getting into professional football was you got picked up scout by scouts watching games and they approach you after or approach your parents and sort of say, we want to get your son down to training that. And that's where it sort of began for me. I went down there, started training and ended up earning myself, obviously, contracts. And, and that's the uh, the short version of, of it. And what was it? How did it feel getting your first professional contract? My first professional contract was is, is incredible feeling. Um, obviously, you, you do all the the hard the hard yards. Obviously, when you're going for those under 13s, under 14s, 15s, 16s, and you know you're obviously getting having to get over to why well, I was having to obviously go over to Fulham and uh, for training after school and things like that. And parents obviously taking you here there and everywhere to get to to games. And you know you, you obviously can't get you can't get um anywhere that much without, without your parents' help. And yeah. obviously they've done that for me. And, you know, I ended up getting the YTS. Um, I don't think it's called a YTS anymore. Um, I'm obviously now one of the veterans in football. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I got my YTS at Fulham. And I was lucky enough to to get my get off of my pro contract almost within a year of getting into my YTS scholarship because um, I don't really know. I just, I just left, I left, when I left school, obviously you go full-time into football training and, and you're there every day and it's your opportunity and you have to you have to take it and i'm lucky enough to be able to say i've obviously taken it and 18 years later i think it's 18 now wow. 18 years later still lucky to be playing um but without you, you don't get here without sacrifices making all those sacrifices the hard work that you have to put in every day and and earning those contracts who, who was the manager at the time you got your first contract at fulham uh, at the time I got my first contract, it was uh, Sean Tagana. Uh, is it, it was uh, Mohamed Al Fayed. Was he running the like owning the club? Yeah, at that he time? was. Uh, he was. Yeah, he was the owner then. Yeah, <clears throat> that's who uh, was the owner at the time. Um, so he was the manager. Uh, and then um, I didn't hang about though when I was there. As in, I got my special contract, and first thing Fulham did for development of their youth players or the ones that I guess they think have got the potential, they send you straight out on loan, which is something that I would recommend to a lot of young players to, to get out and, and play the man's game as quick as possible, to be honest. Yeah. Because I think it's changed a bit now, but obviously once you're in that YTS system, you're playing, you're playing your games week in, week out. And yeah, you're learning the technical aspects of it and, and all that side of it. But 
I mean, all those fundamentals, they should have been driven into you, into your, in your younger years. And I think once you get to sort of 17, I'm not sure how many 17 year olds now sort of make it into first team football, but I was, as that's the biggest thing that I've looked back on my career, I think shaped me for my future because I was playing a man's game at the age of 17. And at that time you think you're, you think you're filled out and you're big and then you actually go to play against a men's team and, and you realise you're still that little skinny teenager fill, trying to fill out your body like so you uh, you learn quickly. How did you find that? I loved it. I went on loan to um, Yeovil Town was my first uh, loan uh, under Gary Johnson, which obviously shaped my career massively because um, I went there, built a relationship with Gary up with Gary um, did well under him and he's obviously one of the managers that took me to places and took me uh, at Brist to Bristol City when I, when I ended up at Bristol City and back to Yeovil when I was nearing my, the end of my Bristol City career so you know you, you build relationships in, in your career and you know it's I do obviously owe a lot to, to him as a manager Are you still in touch with him? I, I, I'm in touch with him from time to time yeah and I, I'm in contact with um his son obviously played with his son Lee, um, so you do you stay in contact with, with with you make friends you make like friends who you know long long term sort of friends who are whether you move on from club you stay in contact with or you know you make uh, you make a lot of teammates obviously throughout your career but you know there'll always be like a, a small percentage that you know that that you still stay in contact with regularly. And you have who's to... oh sorry mate sorry on your job. Oh, no, I was just going to ask, who's your best friend in football? My best friend in football. Yeah, I've got, I've got, I've got a few to be fair. As in, like, I've got my two, my two closest mates. Um, uh, two of the lads that I grew up with at Fulham. Uh, one boy called Alex Lawless, who is now a coach at Leighton Orient. He was, he played at Luton and Torquay, and he's now coaching at Leighton Orient. And then my other one is a head coach, actually a head coach out in the United States at. Um, the university, West Virginia University. So he did, again, this is different paths that people take. He was at Fulham with me, um, didn't get offered the professional contract and took the route to go out to the America and go out to America and do all the, the sort of college football and studying. And then he just sort of rose up through that way and and then it's gone full circle for him. He's now back at the university that he went to play at and is now the head coach there. So, you know, it's, yeah, they're, my two, they're probably my two closest mates in football. When you were uh, out on loan, you had a wee spell at Kilmarnock as well, didn't you? I did, yeah. Uh, again, like I said, when I came back from uh, Fulham, I sorry, when I came back from Yeovil, uh, I was back at Fulham and Chris Coleman, I think, had taken over by that point. Um, again, got me straight back in with, he got me in with the first team training and then um, he ended up giving me my Fulham debut. So I made my Fulham debut under, under Chris Coleman. Uh, and then ended up played in the so came on in the, at the end of the, one of the Premier League games and then played in the FA Cup game against Watford I believe and then they ended up sending me out on loan again just to get more again first team football at, at a different level and ended up at Kilmarnock for maybe three two three months but it got cut short because I had a, a slight back in, injury so I got sent so I went back to Fulham were you uh, apprehensive about coming up to Scottish football at the time? Nah, not at all. I'm I'm one of these I'm one of these people that I just do see whatever whatever's put in front of me. I just I just do it and get on with it. Um, and when something makes your dream and you have to do these things, you just you get up and go. Do you know what I mean? I was from a very young age. I was I was quite independent. Obviously, I was like I said, having to get over to to Fulham from the, from a young age, leaving school and just getting the trains and tubes and buses and everything over to training. And I've always been independent. And like I said, from the age of 16, 17, you're, you're pretty much living out with your house, out with your family home, like away from your, your mum and dad. So you just get on with it and it's part of it. And it's just the experience that you look back when you finish and think, I'm, I'm glad I did that. So my son's 17 just now, Liam. Can I just get a quote for you here? Could I tell him it's a good idea for him to move it to his? <laughs> <laughs> you can if you want <laughs> only, if, only if he's got some, only if he's got somewhere to go <laughs> um, so who was in charge at Kilmarnock at the time 
Uh, Jim Jeffries. All right. Jim Jeffries was the manager. Like Jim, the, the big hearts connection. Uh, he, he's no one of our favourite people in the, Jim and, on the podcast. Yeah, Jim, 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 Jim Jeffries and, and Billy Brown, I think, were the, was the assistant yeah, at the Phil, time. Billy Brown had a wee spell at Hibs as, as well. Not, um, <clears throat> yeah, not Unsuccessful. Not, not, not fondly remembered because of our uh, disastrous cup final with them. But, um, how, how did you find working under Jim Jeffries and Billy Brown? Because they're, they're uh, sort of big characters in Scottish football. Yeah, I mean, listen, like I was, I was a young young kid, um, learning my learning my trade, uh, just trying to find out and learn about first team environments, and, it, and it's different because there's different pressures on it from when you're just in an academy system. Um, obviously, like I said, they're big characters. Uh, probably some would say obviously the old old school generation now, yeah. in, as far as coaching goes. So it's an eye opener, character building. I mean, you have to. You know, you, you hear about the old school sort of hair dry treatment. Jim Jeffries wasn't one to hold back from that. It's eye opening. It's, it's it's the learning curve, and these are all the little things that you have to you face and come up against in your career. And and these are things that test you and challenge you to see whether it is for you. And when your dreams your dream, these are the things you love and you just take on. You learn from it. If you don't agree with it, you don't agree with it. Or if it works for you, it works for you. But you find your own path. And uh, so you, you go um, from Kelly back to Fulham and then out to U- Yeovil again? Yes, I did, yeah. So the first time I went to Yeovil, they was in League Two. Um, and I played. I went I went for the first half of the season, played I think was 16, maybe 15, 16, 17 games for them in the first half. That was my lone finish. So I went back. Um, I think they then went on to win that league that season. Um, and then I went back to Yeovil again in League, I think it was in League One then. Uh, played some more games under Gary Johnson, and like I said, I built that. I was building that relationship with him, and he knew me. The new, he knew the type of player I was, the type of the guy I was, the type of character I was in the dressing room. Even at that sort of young age, I think I was maybe 19 at the time. Um, like I said, it was it was enjoyable. Yeovil, Yeovil Town as a club for me is, is a really good club, um, really good sort of family club, small club obviously in, mm-hmm. in the Somerset area, but. It was um, it's been a massive part of my, it was a massive part of my early early football career down in the West Country. And so, how did you feel about leaving Yeovil to go to because uh, Bristol was next? How did you? Yeah, feel? so obviously I, I was only on I was only on loan at Yeovil, and then I went back to Bristol City, um, and then I got offered another contract at Fulham, uh, but at the time I had my first, I had my son was on the way. Um, and I sort of, it would have been easy for me just to stay at Fulham and, and say, I'll stay at a Premier, Premier League club and just stay in the system of playing reserve football. But that wasn't me. By that point, I played a, hand, a, a number of uh, first team football games and Gary Johnson had gone to um, Bristol City. Uh, so he took me on loan for the second part of, I can't remember what year it was, second part of um, the season. So I went on loan to Bristol City from the January to the end of the season. Um, and then after that point, I said Fulham offered me a contract, but Bristol offered me a contract as well. And by that point, I wanted to go and start my own career rather than and playing playing regularly, rather than just sort of stay in a in an academy system. And and it's a, it a big choice, but I made yeah. the choice one because obviously I had my my son was on the way, so my job as a as a dad and obviously a young dad. Um, my job as a dad was to to get out there and provide for my for my for my son. So that was a decision I made and it's not one that I would look back and regret at all. How common do you think it is, Liam, for players to just stay in the system like you described and not go out and try and force a career for themselves? Um I don't know. I mean everyone everyone's different. Um like I said, because I had had that taste of playing first team football, when you go back uh, into the, when you go back to just playing reserve or football where there's not the pressure on it, or there's not the, you know, there's there's not like a real meaning behind it. It, it it's not the same. And I think you just once you get that taste for it, you you want to play regularly. And if you haven't got that desire in you, 
and that sort of passion for it, then, you know, you're not going to get very far or you, or you might do, but you'll end up falling out of the game because that's the one thing that you have to keep that, that desire and passion. How important was it when you were deciding what to do there that you had a good relationship with, with Gary Johnson at, at Bristol? Was it, was, is it? Yeah, it was, it, it was huge. Like I said, I'd, I'd gone to Yeovil twice before and um, I did well under Gary. I, I, I was, uh, I was, I don't know, maybe a, a different type of uh, centre-back at the time because, you know, um, I mean, even in my time at Hibs, you probably would have seen I, I, I was more of a, sort of laid back kind of player. Um, and Gary, to be fair to him, luckily he he shaped he, he started he started shaping me as a player because obviously that's what that's what when you're growing when you're coming through as a youngster, you start picking up and getting coached differently. You've got obviously once you go through all these different years, you're getting coached by all these different types of coaches with all different everyone's got a, a different um attribute everyone's gonna have something that differently gonna pick up and it's just identifying those ones that help you and sort of shape you on your your path and that's what happened with Gary I just built a good relationship with him he knew he could he could trust me um and at the time Bristol City were were rebuilding and, and he brought me in and and I was part of the of the rebuild there. Was that something that appealed to you because if, if well to come on to it a be bit but Hibs obviously by the time you come to Hibs we were in a bit of a rebuild so is that mm-hmm. quite like a, a, a as a player, is that quite an exciting thing to be going into? Um, I, th- I think any I think any project um, that sort of starting out can be quite exciting. But obviously, the one thing you don't know is that you, you don't know how it's going to go. Uh, so it's good being part of it, of course. Um, Bristol City is a huge club. It's a it's a big big club down in England, and um, the potential for it is is massive. And and like I said, it was a decision I decided to make because one, I wanted to play football, I wanted to play games, and two, I had, I had my son to think about. You were there for uh, for a good number of years. So Wikipedia has yeah, two hundred and forty-seven appearances. What were your, your highlights at, at Bristol? What, what times stand out for you? Um, I mean, obviously, when we won, I think the season I went on loan there, we I think we just missed out on the on the playoffs there. I think it was, and and then that's when the sort of the rebuild build the re the proper rebuild started and um that following season we got the promotion up from the league one to the championship which I think was that's probably one of the highlights but then that following season we then went on to obviously go to the playoff final uh in the championship to go to the Premier League and so we was on that that we had that we built that momentum that role that that confidence of a team that was used to winning so I think it sort of just snowballed the way Southampton did it. Southampton went sort of League One mm. Championship straight to the Premier League because they had that momentum. And, you know, we fell short just at the last hurdle at Wembley. Uh, we lost 1 0 to Hull in the, um, I don't know whether you remember the game, I think it's the Windass Dean Volley. Uh, oh, yeah. Dean Windass's Volley, that game. So, um, yeah, you know, it's that's part of it. I won't experience that is what it, that it was. And, you know, like I said, I was at Bristol City for a long time after that as well. Well, How frustrating is it as a player when in a game like that where, say, the opposition's thrown everything at you possible and you've defended it and you've just batted everything away and you're trying to get your chances at the other end and then someone like Dean Windass pops up with a wonder strike? It's not really. I wouldn't say it's frustrating. I mean, it's it's a hell of a, hell of a strike. Sometimes quality, quality comes out, do you know what I mean? And that's what happened on that day. I mean... I've watched the I've watched the game back obviously numerous times um, years ago and you know that that day I don't know how we didn't win the game but you can't change you can't you can't change what's happened can you we just, just we weren't meant to win it um, and it was, a, it was a hell of a strike and if you're gonna obviously you don't want to lose games especially the one when you're one away one away from the Premier League but um, you know that that volley is definitely it was definitely a worthy winner of a of a final um, got in. But again, it's just another experience that you you take on in your career, and, and you either let it affect you, or you let it build your strength and your character, and you learn from it. What was it like playing at Wembley? Yeah, amazing, really, really good. Um, incredible stadium. I think there was maybe eighty nine thousand people there. Loud, very, very loud. Um, loud that you almost 
you've almost just got to sort of rest on your just your senses and your footballing ability because you can't even you can't really hear each other on the pitch because it's that kind of that noise so you know it's and again I think I was only 20 21 maybe 2021 20, playing in that game so again another experience for me to to play in that sort of game at, at that age and, and again it comes from my, my decision to, to go out and play uh first team football mm. and how did you move to Hibs come about so I'd obviously been at Bristol for a long, long time and um, they were obviously going through a transition period as well. So at that time, obviously, um, Steve Cotchard had gone in as Bristol City manager and he pulled, he pulled me early, early on. And to be fair, to this day, like I, that's one of the things I remember I sort of respect, um, I respect him for because he told me early on that I wasn't going to be in the, the, fu- the plans for the future going forward. And, I thought, that was, I thought that was really good of him, to be honest, because it, it allowed me to keep myself training. He was he was happy with me to keep training and, and keep my fitness levels up and stuff like that. But I knew that I wasn't going to be at the end of the season. So it allowed me to, you know, sort of look about for what I wanted to do. Do you know what I mean? And I didn't have to think, or oh, am I going to be here or not? Yeah. So I, res- I do, I respect, uh, that's one of the things I always look back and, and think I respect him as a manager for that, to be honest. Um. And as a person, because I think that's the right way to go about doing something like that. Um, and then, yeah, uh, I've had had uh, numerous opportunities in England to sort of go and play either at sort of League One, League Two level. But uh, spoke to obviously Alan Stubbs got in contact with me, um, and he'd obviously known about me from obviously being um, an English guy himself and know me in the English game, and he just sort of said that. I'd want you to come up and take a look at Hibs. Would you be interested? And to be honest, I hadn't even thought about going back to Scotland. It was just, and then uh, I just decided to, I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll go 100%, go and have a look. So went up and met him. And to be honest, I was, my mind was pretty much made up as soon as I got up here. And um, when I remember going to Easter Road and, and the training ground and just looking at that facility alone, um, thinking this is a place that you can definitely improve yourself, or you know you can, you can you're going to be able to produce some good stuff here because of the facility that's there. And obviously with Alan Stubbs and where he's been, his vision for what he was wanting to do. Because I think I think when I signed, I think I think at that point when he, when he first there was only like sort of maybe seven or eight players that were actually yeah. registered on Hibs's book. So it, it was a complete rebuild and you know he had he had his plans for what he wanted to do um we knew it's going to be uh a good time well i knew i, I thought it's going to be a good time to go there because obviously of the competitive nature of that league at that time um and again it was a challenge and i don't know why but i like challenges <laughs> because it's it's it, it, i don't know it's, it's you know you you want to i always think you want to always look back I always thought I want to look back when I finish and 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 say that I was and know that I was part of something, and I, I can I can look back on my career, um, and say that I was part of stuff. Do you know what I mean? And I think getting back, getting Hibs back. Obviously, it took us a few years to get back to the Premier League, but you know, in those in my time at Hibs, it was um, it was always positive, and we were always we were always playing for something, mm-hmm. like and that's. That was one of the big things about when I first went to Hibs and Stubbsy's sort of vision for what was going to happen with Leanne and, and George as well and reconnecting with the fans, all that sort of stuff. It, it all sort of came. And, you know, apologies, it took three years to get back to Premier League, but I'm sure you'll forgive us <laughs> for, what, for what we did in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you talked there about connecting with the, or reconnecting with the fans. And it's one of the mm. things that, like, uh, so I, I was walking with uh, my mate Colin off a of quick bang, John, um, mm. earlier on today, and we were talking about this coming up tonight, and he said to ask you about how you got that dressing room spirit at, at, at Hibs, and you know, was it was it something that was special? Because obviously we, you wrote a song about Hibs, and I can't tell you how many players we we had like in the seasons coming up to, to that that passed in and out of the club that. There was no connection. Like they just didn't give a fuck. If you know, if you were totally honest, they, they, 
they came and they picked up a wage and then they, they, they left um, some of them on better terms than, than others. And then we had some like yourself with no connection to Hibs beforehand, but mm. you seem to really just get the club and the fans obviously took to you as, as well. So what was mm. it about Hibs that, that connected with you? I don't, I, um, I don't know. I, I, couldn't, I don't think I've put my finger on any one particular thing. Um, I think, like I said, I, I think when you when you go to a club like Hibs and, and you see the, the facility and obviously the city that it's in, um, you just know that it's it's meant to be it's meant to be something. And I just think I'm one of these people that whatever I submerge myself into, I I submerge myself fully. I don't see the point in like if you want to say like people just turning up for a wage and stuff like that. You either if you're in, you're in. And I think that's what happened with the rebuild at Hibs. I think the players and the characters that were signed all had all had hunger, all had something to prove. Um, like myself, I was I had had a few injuries previous coming up to Hibs, um, and you always hear the, the chat about are those injuries going to affect you, blah 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 blah, um, and you always. Is it, do I, did I want to prove that? You know, that wasn't that wasn't the case, potentially. But I think what happened was, I think the players that got signed, the characters that got signed, like I said, all had hunger. And the hunger was to be part of something, win something. Mm-hmm. And the, the, I mean, you speak to, you speak to the boys now that were part of that squad. And there was, I know you'll hear a lot of players say it about their own individual squads, but that squad was, it's definitely um, a special, special, special squad. To be honest, there was—I don't know what it was, but there was no, there was no egos, nothing. It was all just—we were genuinely, genuinely like a, like some sort of family, and that's the truth. And even with, even with um, the coaches as well, with with Studsley, John Doolan, and and Taff and all that, it was just obviously the kit man, Tam and Joyce, and that you know, it, like everything was just. I don't know. Obviously, Stubbsy had his, his ways of of doing that and integrating the boys together. And and if that if that worked, that's, I'll be hopefully taking that forward if, if I can ever get into coaching once I finish. How was Stubbsy as a coach? As a coach, I thought he was brilliant. He, 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 listen, when you he was one of the reasons why I, I signed as well because obviously I'd known him as a player, <laughs> um, played my position as a player. So he's one of these guys that, as I'm still obviously coming through my career. I would have looked. I would have looked up to, and and you want to learn, and you want to learn, and I think you should always be looking to learn. I mean, if you get to a point where you can't learn something new, then you've either made it and you're at the very top, <laughs> or um, it's time to start passing on your knowledge to other people. Um, and then you know that's what I'll sort of hope to do as I progress. And what was your, your highlight of the first season? That you were, because obviously we never got promoted. The uh, the first season was. Mm. I thought we. I thought personally that John, you you might disagree with you might agree with. Me. I thought we were the best team in the league that season. Like some of the games that we played, like the Hammer Rangers. We yeah, we, we, yeah, we were talking about this the other day. Me and um, me, Robbo and Jace were talking about it the other day because I think um, you know when you see on Twitter all the stuff can't like on this day. Yeah, I think yeah, it had yeah. the, the I think it had the game where we where Robbo scored against Rangers, I think it was. And obviously we get me and Jace at Dundee now, we were giving him a bit of stick because obviously he's, he's obviously stopped now, he's a coach and that and it's it's just when you look back and you see videos and of like what what we did in them times. And like I said, every every year we played at Hibs, every year I played at Hibs, it was it was always enjoyable. There was always something on the line that like we were making semi finals and finals and we were like I said, the competitive nature of that championship at the time was brilliant. Obviously, with Hearts and, and Rangers in it, and so we was able to get. I mean, it must have been great for you, lot as fans, to have all the derbies that you got you got to watch and all that as well. Do you know what I mean? Most of them were alright. Eh? <laughs> 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 they're always great. Eh? They're either amazing or they're shy. <laughs> it goes one way or another. <laughs> um, how many how many derbies did you come up against uh, when you played for? Uh, Bristol, did you have any good or memorable victories or defeats over Bristol Rovers? I think, I think maybe, I think we only played one maybe because I don't feel I think we was we was in higher league to them at the time. I think right. they had dropped down to 
League Two, so I can't really. I remember, I do remember playing against them a couple of times, um, but I couldn't, I couldn't tell you how many off the top of my head. What was your experience of the Edinburgh Derby like? Like your first, first couple of them, how did you find it? Amazing. Um, like we talk, we like again, like obviously we're all with Jace at Dundee now. We, we still talk about them to these days and um, our time at Hibs and how good it and how good it was and. You know, these are memories that prove how good it was. Because if it wasn't, you wouldn't you wouldn't be talking about it to this day. You know what I mean? Um, it's always good. Those those games are they're fully loaded for us as as players. And like I said, that that squad at the time was all in. And you would I don't think you'd find one player in that that squad at the time that that wasn't fully hundred percent committed towards the cause at Hibs. I think for us watching it, like I say, I, I've. Although we never finished top of the league, etc., I, I always felt we were better than the teams we were playing. Did you have a sense mm-hmm. as a player that you, you were part of a good team at that point? Yeah, you you, you knew, um, you just knew. Uh, it's it's hard to explain. Um, I think when you, when you can go onto a football pitch and you can look left, right, behind you and in front of you, and the players to your left, to your right, behind you and in front of you, you sort of pretty much could put your, your house on it that they're gonna be there for you. I think that's a a good a good dynamic to have within the team and, and that's the that is the vibe that we we did have and so obviously football football's football and you and you're never gonna you're never gonna get a hundred percent game every single time. But definitely within that time at Hibs for me, I think there was a lot of a lot of times when the games were we were very consistent. We played nice sometimes when you Sometimes you forget and you, and you watch games back and and you and you realise how how well you were playing and mm. it's just a good style of football. I think it must have been exciting for uh, the fans to watch as well. To be honest, I know it is obviously only the championship at the time, but like I said, at that point we were rebuilding, we were reconnecting it, and I think, I mean, even with the stuff that we did off pitch and stuff and, and the fans and the players and the club sort of, in my opinion, reconnected. Obviously, I don't. I wasn't here before uh, with when, what happened with our relegation, but I was glad to be part of the sort of rebuild, you know? So I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the championship, going to see grounds that I wouldn't normally see. And I think Hibs needed that spell away from what had become quite routine. Matt, you mentioned it before about, you know, players just coming in, picking up a wage and then disappearing again. It was a revolving door culture for a number mm-hmm. of years. So when we got guys like, you know, like Liam in and, um, a few of the other players. I'm trying to think of them off the top of my head just now. Dave, right. Dave, like, Dave, Dave, come in. Dave, agree. Yeah, like just, just, yeah. just those little sort of building blocks that led to something much greater. Mm. Ah, excuse me. Uh, it said, was like I said. Go on. Oh, on you go. No, it's fine. Go. Carry uh, on. Yeah, we, we ended up for, for for that. Like we still have players at the, at the club now from from that you know for that time that are still you know important players at the club. But that was the first mm-hmm. thing that actually we, we had a bit of continuity in the team, so you knew it was building season to season. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, was, it was good. Uh, did you feel like a Premiership team? Yeah, I think I think I think we did hundred um, percent. When you when you're at a club like Hibs with the the stadium, the facilities, the the fan base, it, it's without doubt, as you can see now, that, that it is a, a very strong team in Scotland, very strong club in Scotland. Um, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think did we not play against a, a few Premier League teams in in the cups and stuff in, in yeah. those seasons? Yeah, we did, didn't we? So, and every time we did that, it was a, it was a sort of not a, not a test to see how are we up to that standard. It was just a different type of game because obviously when you're one of the better teams in the Championship, you come up against a lot of teams that are trying to frustrate you and trying to sit in, and you have to find ways to un unpick the lock and get in and score goals and whereas when you go up against teams in the Premier League and, and you're the kind of the underdog at the time in, in, in terms of sort of what league you're in you know they come out and, and they try and be the, the footballing team and then that was our opportunity then to really show what we could do and I think you know I think we we, we did well to be honest I definitely was at that first season was that where we had to, we went out to Dundee United I think on penalties like a three-three game. Yeah, but I think so. Uh, and the penalties were of that um, Easter Road. Easter Road was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that one. Yeah. 
because I think that it was games like that that you definitely thought we we were better than the championship. Like we, we were in a kind of false position. So obviously you miss out on promotion first season. You go into the second season. We still got Rangers in the league. At mm-hmm. the start of that season, what what was the the kind of the targets that you set yourselves? Again, the target remained the same. That it was to get the Hibs back into the the Premier League. Um, and we knew that, and we knew we had pretty much we had the same pretty we had the same squad uh, from the previous season. And obviously, we I think that season we added uh, Big Dads, Marvin. I think that's the year they came, was it not? Maybe. Yeah, and McGinn, um, McGinn so, coming that year as well. Yeah, and McGinn. So like you know, we added these these players that not only in, enhanced us, but you know, it's you need that you need that within a squad. You need that competition. You need that those characters and you know that was a another another good year. Even we had the uh, we had Malonga. Remember Malonga mm-hmm. left in that season and uh, Stokes come in. Um right well so actually we'll, 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 we'll come forward because obviously we, we had the League Cup run. Because at one mm-hmm. point we were on we still had a chance of winning the league and the two cups. So we're going to the League Cup, the League Cup final won't dwell on it too much for you. But what was uh, what was your memories of, of that game? Well, obviously another cup final or a cup final at Hamden. Um, obviously scored, and then made the, well made the mistake to obviously, you know, to to let them to win it. But you know, I said my piece after the, after that game, and. Uh, you know, you ever no one ever means to do anything like that. No, it's just happens. But I, I, I said what I said after that. I maintain, had we won that, I don't think we then would have. Well, I don't know. Obviously, we won't know now. But you know, if we had won that cup, would we have then gone on to do what we did? And I'm pretty sure I would rather won the the one we oh. did. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I was going to say, you had like a little bit of an awkward smile there when you were talking no, about no. Listen, no one no, holds no. that against you. But No, trust me, um, I know that. I mean, like I said, I said, listen, it happens in games and, you know, we, uh, the time, it's more the timing of the, of the goal. Because obviously, I think the first goal was, was from a mistake as well that we conceded. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it that. They weren't meant to be, like I said, sometimes it's not meant to be. Um, but like I said, I, I, looking back now, I don't really think about it because we then went on to win the the, the one that we got always used to get stick about, um, always used to get questions about, always used to get people using that stupid term hips and all that um, against us. And we are, or we were part of the, or I was in that team and club and, Management at the time were part of the team that did it and, and was able to bring it home. What was you like were... having the hips that thing chucked at you all the time? Because I, I remember after the Scottish Cup, which we'll talk about, I mean, John McGinn made the, you know, he interviewed and he said, I guess we hips that. And you could tell in the dressing room it was something that hurt the players. That How much did you use that to drive you on? Um, to be honest, it's like, unless you're, unless you're one of these people that get affected by, what the press say about you or what people say about you, then you, you just sort of take it with a pinch of salt. And, you know, I, I came up and obviously I was here, like it was two, my second season at Hibs, I think, was it second te- second, my second season at yeah. Hibs? I think we won the Scottish Cup, yeah. Um, so obviously I, I'd only had the questions for like those two seasons when it was Scottish Cup. It's like, oh, you do know Hibs has never won the Scottish Cup in this many years and da 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 and all that. And it was like, right, okay. Whatever, let's just go out and play. And I, I genuinely, I genuinely think at that time, I think the the squad, the team, we just we were we were playing that sort of relaxed. We, we weren't going out with that that sort of pressure. Do you know what I mean? It didn't feel like we was going out with that sort of pressure of having to. We weren't going out going right. We need to win the Scottish Cup. It was just we went out and we're doing. We were just in a good place at the time, and you know that. I think you would have heard people say it before, and I've, I've heard I've heard Stubbsy say it before, and you just had a feeling that day, and that's that's the genuine truth. Yeah. Um, me and Dave were roomies, 
and we we were we were talking about scoring in the in the Scottish Cup and you know and he went on to do it. You know what I mean? Because obviously we're talking about scoring in finals because I'd scored in the one previous and we talk about imagine scoring this one. I remember me and him in the room chatting about it and yeah man, the rest is history, right? you know what I mean? I'm <laughs> sure, uh, sure he's he's quoted as saying that he'd said if you're gonna do it, do it late. Like if he was gonna score he'd want to score right at the end. I know yeah, not that, in the eighty eighth yeah, minute and the ninety second. Uh, now we yeah, we had we had the we were, that's, we were having that conversation. He was like, right, do you have a score like early on or like score late? And I remember talking about it. We were saying like you'd, you'd rather score late, and he left it as late as possible. <laughs> <laughs> so see, they after the I'm just right, John. You'll correct me if my timeline's wrong. We had the League Cup final, and then right after that, we were up at Inverness for the quarter final with the yep. Scottish Cup. How do you pick mm-hmm. yourself up, Liam? Like for, for having the like a devastating loss like that at Hamden, to then go mm-hmm. right, we've got to we've got to go again. How how do you as a, yeah. as a player get yourself up up for that and and get through it? I remember that actually, like it was yesterday. Now you brought it back up. Um, I remember, yeah, we had the 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 disappointment, and obviously everyone touted us to win that to win that league cup and. Did happen, um, and like I said, things, these things, are all the things in football that test you as a person, as a character, and you either rise or fall, and that's the that's the truth. I know, it, I know, it sounds a bit, a bit cliche and, and all that sort of stuff, but you do. And we had we were going to a tough away game at Inverness, um, big physical team, but like I said, we just. I don't know. There was, it was just we just we just knew you could trust your teammates. You know what I mean? Like that's that's what it comes down to. You could trust. We trusted our our methods, our tactics, our philosophy at the time, and we got out there and and everyone would have been expecting us to crumble because mm-hmm. of all the the past stuff that people chucked at, at Hibs and you know, oh, well, that's it. They're going to chuck it again or whatever, but we didn't. I mean, we we went out there and. and it was a great, we played, we actually played, we actually, I remember the game, we actually played really well. I think, I think, who got injured? Was it the goal, Ox got injured? He, he, and, he lost his contact line. <laughs> yeah. We booked for time wasted for it as well. Yeah. And um, we had, and they brought on the big boy, I can't remember his name. I forgot his name. The Conrad Logan? Um, no, it weren't, no. no oh, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't, it was, no. It was the, um, what his name? Big tall blonde boy we had, wasn't it? Oh, Gunnarsson. Sorry, mate. No, Vertanen. Like no, also, no. Also yeah, the goal, the goal, yeah. yeah, the goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah, Obviously. that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I remember, I remember all those little mini, those sort of uh, things that happened in the game. And you know, we went up there and got the result, and and then it was, you know, full focus on the league again, and and we were still in a cup. How how did that work out for the players? So. We mentioned uh, the League Cup before and obviously the disappointment there and then you were straight back into a game against Inverness and I wrote something mm. the other day about uh, Conrad Logan so forgive me when you said big guy I just immediately went to the polar bear um, but Hibs were playing on average at that point a game every four days and that was consistent from the, the League Cup final right through to the Scottish Cup final on the 21st of May so mm-hmm. like, did you ever feel physically drained or were you just Never given the opportunity to think about it because you were always in game mode. Yeah, you was like when when you know you've got games like that regularly. Um, yeah, obviously your training's adapted. Um, if you're a starter, your loads is managed obviously massively, and you know uh, credit to obviously that the the staff at at Hibs at the time that was there, the sports scientists and stuff. Because obviously they're they're massive in it um, because obviously you got to try and keep all the boys at sort of peak levels and but still get the work in the training ground and and still work on what the managers want in the tactics how we're going to beat a team and at that point you just sort of especially like coming towards the end of the season you are kind of, you are kind of just in that mode of just game recover I can't the pitches for a bit game do you know what I mean and, and it's just one of those you know players know them know their bodies or you should know your body and, and you know what's right for you and 
and everyone was managed managed right and you could tell by the, the way we were still at those peak levels come the 21st of May. Yeah. So the the, the next round took us up against uh, Dundee United. Mm. What do you remember of that game? Good game. Really good game. I remember the remember Jace, obviously. Um Comrade obviously was I think that's Comrade. I think that's known as Comrade Comrade's game, isn't it? See, see as, a, Morgan, yeah. as a as a defender, because Conrad had just come to the club, like it wasn't like he'd been in for ages beforehand. He'd just uh, no, he'd, he'd just come in, brought it up as an emergency because uh, Oxley wasn't available. Mm-hmm. What are you thinking as a defender when you like you look around and, and Conrad Logan's there? Did are you thinking what we were all thinking, or what were you thinking? Fucking yeah, him. what were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking. I've got a chance to play football, if I'm honest <laughs> with you. Like when you saw Conrad, like when, when he came out of the pitch at, at Hamden, mm. I mean, this is like part of the beauty of the, the, the story is everybody around us were like, geez, it looks like he's been playing football for a while. Um, mm. And then, of course, he, he, he pulled the, the, the performance of his life and, and took us to, to our cup final. So folk go over it quite quick. But Well, yeah, I I obviously knew, I knew Conrad from before when he'd obviously been playing in England and, and you know the talent that he was as a goalkeeper um, yeah he was I think he'd had a bad injury yeah. uh, before um, but if you had seen him in training you'd know that he's still a very very good goalkeeper so I think it's different for obviously we see we saw um, him daily in training and the ability that he had and just because Obviously, like you said, you 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 don't judge someone just sometimes by that fit that that first look, you know. Yeah. Uh, we knew we knew because I think at that point was I think Ox was fit at that time as well. I think he was back fit, was he not? Yeah, but suspended. And comrade and, and yeah, and comrade yeah. Um, came in, but I think comrade, but um, and then comrade, like I said, he he did what he did and made the saves he made. Look, at the end of the day, he's. He had a good career before coming to Hibs, and he, was, and he was a good goalie. Just obviously had injuries, um, so having so it was no surprise that he was making the saves he made. But obviously, to make that many, and then the penalty saves, it, it's because he deserves all the plaudits that he got. Do you know what I mean? Because he's, you know, again, he came he came to Hibs and and probably has that to prove. And if people were sort of looking at him, thinking, "Oh my God, I can play football now." I think he proved all them wrong, so I'm yeah. pretty sure. If you was in the sticks, you wouldn't have made them saves, mate, would you? No, I, 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 can, I can comfortably say no danger. <laughs> no danger. <laughs> um, and so, right, that, that game, the probably the most notable thing, apart from Conrad Logan, was Jason's uh, penalty miss. What, <laughs> yeah. what was going through your head when that happened? Uh, that's Jace, was one of them. Um, you know, Listen, um, like I said, if that had been a, a different, a different, a different point in the game, then it probably turns out to be one of the worst penalty misses ever. Even though it was a bad penalty miss, but we still had the opportunity um, with the time left. And like I said, people make mistakes, and it, and it happens in football. It's more how you react after. And he got up and finished the penalty in the actual penalty shootout as well, didn't he? So yeah. That's- you know, he's not one of us. This is what I mean. So he didn't shy away from it. He's a character. He's a big enough character to be able to deal with that pressure. And he scored enough goals for Hibs to to be able to, you know, sort of claw his way back from that decision he made. <laughs> yeah. When Jason stepped up to hit his, or to hit Hibs' decisive penalty that afternoon in the penalty shootout, mm. at any point did you think that he was going to try it again? <laughs> nah, nah, I didn't. <laughs> Listen, if you if you see the way Jace kick, kicks the ball, he he can proper scalp it. And I just thought, especially after missing the way he did, um, he was only ever gonna put his foot through it. And or I think he where did he go? He, I think he went. Bottom. He went left. He just I just he went, he went. Yeah, he went bottom there. Yeah. Um, but he wasn't gonna. I don't think he would have done it. He's not. He's not that crazy to have done two <laughs> two attempted big penalties in one game. 
Well, I wonder if the dressing room after it, if did. I wonder if the Dundee United keeper thought that he was crazy enough to do it a second time because he kind of stood stock still. Uh, he might, he might have. Um, you know, I think, I think a lot of um, when you're when you're a striker, uh, you're used to scoring a lot of goals or shooting at goals, and and I don't think if you just if you miss a a chance, any good striker is not going to then let that affect them later on. So it's credit to him as a player. Have you hit many penalties yourself? No, not really. No. Not really. Not really been in the the position to, to be honest. Not really needed to, and you know, it's not my bag. <laughs> so I just realised we uh, we've skipped a rather important game in the cup run. Two 0 down the tiny. <laughs> so yeah. um, we're going to rewind yeah. a wee bit. What's your uh, your memories of that game? So Tyne Castle f- in the cup, full house. Yeah. We we'll go two nothing down. What's yeah. going through your mind? Again, it's just it's more it's more just the fact we're losing a game. It's not. I mean, it's, it happens. They've scored two goals. Like, what do you do? You don't. Again, I just think it's. I, I, I mentioned it before. I just generally think it's a, a testament to the character that that team had, and I think that is the the theme for me. Like throughout my time at Hibs, I think the character. And the, the togetherness that that team had was was why we got back, and we were, we we never we never gave up. We there was not I can't remember one game that I played in where I felt like we're not out here or we 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 sort of like just let them. You've chucked this one. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. type thing, that type feeling. Because you know, especially when you, listen, when you're playing the derbies as well, you don't want to be that. You don't want to be on the losing side of it because you know that the next few few days especially but until you probably can play them again it's that bragging rights that you hear about and, and you get the you know you have to sort of go walk around with your hood up and that if you're in Edinburgh and stuff like that sometimes and, and all that sort of stuff so you know um, like I said we got them back to we went and got obviously the goals and two great goals hit one of the lads yeah McGee McGee who's at Dundee with me was playing in, was playing in the game and he's like I still don't know how that ball went, uh, Hallen's goal went in, and um, I don't care how it went in either. <laughs> it, went in. it went in, and that's all that matters. And we got them back to obviously Easter Road and 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 done the business. What was said at half time? Do you, you went in, so two nothing down, and get, get in the dressing room? Do you remember what the what the chat was? It's a cup game, Gus. You have to you have to go for what you have to you have to go for it. You have to. Um, What's the worst that can happen in a cup game? You go out of a cup. Do you know what I mean? And so you, you leave it all out there. And Jace's header, great header. Some people, I've heard people say that it was lucky. It's not lucky. He's, I've seen him do it enough times yeah. in training where he, that flipped header, loopy header, and it goes in. It's a great header. Gets us back in. And, and then obviously, like I said, Paul comes up with that finish that, I don't care how it went in, but it went in, and like I said, the rest is history. I just had this horrible image in my head when you were describing it there, talking about how you know how did the ball manage to go in. I'm thinking of the crowd of players, the the goalkeeper mm. on the deck, and Paul Hanlon going for it. And I think he's, I think he loses his foot in a little bit. Yeah, he sort of slips. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, a slip I th- tackle type thing, and it. I don't like I said, I don't care. It could have gone in off any part of his body or anatomy. I don't care. It's in. And we're yeah. in the, we're in the re- we got the replay, and you can't take what happened away. Yeah, I think Liam Henderson tried to claim it came off his shorts on the way in, <laughs> as well. Sure, he's probably uh, tried to claim a touch. Um, so uh, we come back, and we, what I remember about that is at the end of the game, the, the Hibs ends absolutely bouncing because mm. we, we've stayed in the cup and Hearts have chucked it. But I think the the. The whole performance, Hibs were the better team. Like even though we went in two 0 down, I don't think it was ever a two 0 game. But Hearts were a couple of goals better yeah. than us. And to come back, especially with all the Hibs that shite that was was kind of getting thrown about at the time, mm. to cut to come back and and not just accept defeat and take it to the replay, I think there was definitely a feeling that when we got them back to Easter Road, we were going to always going to win that game. What was yeah uh, yeah hundred percent. What was the build up to that game like, Liam? 
this we we again the same build up it is uh, most derbies yeah you know you know what you're going to get as in atmosphere wise you know what's on it another another step in the the right direction towards the the next round of the cup and and like you said they're definitely like we knew on that day that we we were going to win that game without doubt I, I wouldn't I know it's easy, I know people will say it's easy to say after you've done it, but genuinely, the, like I said, the, the feeling was there, and we went out and we dominated the game, and we wanted you could tell we wanted it more. Yeah. First tackles, second tackles, third tackles, challenges, headers, a lot. We was all in. Like I said, we was all in. Like the whole squad was all in at that time. I'm telling you now. Because as a, a support that night, we knew we were going to win as well. Like it was a. a a proper buzz about the stadium. Like sometimes you go to a derby, and so it's never f- like flat, but but sometimes there's a, like a, a trepidation. Mm. But that night it was just like every, thing, everybody was all well. like, yeah. That's one of my favourite. Yeah, those night times, those those, those night those night time games. We've had we've had multiple of them at, at his where it's just a different feeling sometimes at, in the night time games at Easter Road when I was there especially. And that was uh, Sunshine on Leith playing at the end. How how was that? Can they mm-hmm. take an applause for the, the, the fans? It's epic, isn't it, that tune? It's like, it's, uh, like I've had people from down in England like, who saw the cup final version and like they were just like, that's unbelievable. That's just like mind blowing. I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you know what I mean? It's good to like. It's good to it's good to be part of it. It's, it's massive. It's all, like I said, all these little things and memories. And sometimes you when you obviously you're you're just getting on with your day to day sort of stuff. And obviously I've moved on and playing up here now and things like that. You you forget. And I sort of sometimes I did a, I did a podcast a while back, and they reminded me of things in my career. And you, and you think bloody hell, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And these are the things that when you do take the time to look back, that you just Absolutely love and adore. Ah, magic. Um, right, we've done it out of sequence, but we're going out of the cup final. It's cup final morning. What's what's the day like for you, Liam? Uh, it's good. Um, we, like I said, we we had a good night in the hotel, and we obviously had our suits. But by the way, I sourced those ties. See those ties? Did you get them? Did you? I come from me. Who knows? <laughs> have you got any um, left over? One of my mates loves I... collecting this uh, this type of Hibs memorabilia, and he'll kill me if I don't ask you if you've got any spare. Any ties? Uh, I don't think so, because I remember we cause we had we had, I think we we had like a there was a club tie at the time, but I don't think it was green enough. Or something like that. It was, and then I remember I was talking to George, and we wanted a certain, start, certain sort of like style of tie. And I remember going on, can't remember where we got them from. I, I went on internet somewhere and saw these like tires. We wanted that green, you know, the proper like yeah. proper Hibs green. Um, and I remember just going sourcing it and putting the order over to George Craig to order them in. And they all came in, and obviously the suits and that. And I remember just yeah, we're getting up breakfast as normal. To be fair, like on the day, I think everyone's different. Um, you know, you just sort of you go through your, you genuinely do just go through your normal routine because I think if you get overcome with the occasion, then it can it can drain you without realizing. So I think a lot of it was, I mean, we'd been used to playing in big games. I think yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think that. That sort of came into it for us. Like we we'd been at Hamden before. We'd played against, obviously we played against Rangers multiple times that that season. Um, so it wasn't. So we knew what we were coming up against. Um, and when we had this, I remember having a team photo done in our suits and that in the hotel. Um, and it was just a you know like a classic cup final kind of day feeling to it the sort of police escort to the stadium all that sort of stuff and you know that's it once you get on that bus you go to work you head like whether you're a headphone person whether you're a 
read a book person, whether you're just an eyes closed, sit back person, that was the moment that you know, you switch on and go to work. What was uh, what was Stubbs' team talk like the head of the game? Do you remember it? I, I obviously won't be able to remember it like word for word, but you know, Stubbsy was very much a very much a good motivator, and very much a just trust in yourselves, trust in your teammates around you, trust in what we what we have been doing. Because I think at that time we were we were playing our three five. I think we were playing our three five two formation. Um, we were playing some good, like we we played some real. In my opinion, we played some of our best football in our three five two formation at Hibs. Um, we knew Rangers' threats at the time. We knew you're going to have to do jobs on certain players and nullify certain players. And I think you just, I think you could just. I mean, I've watched obviously the cup, the cup final back, and you could just see how how much it meant to people, I think. And obviously, like I said, the, I don't think we deserve to be the 2-1 down, but we were to, um, not 2-1 down, sorry. I don't think we deserve, they deserve to get back in to go 2-2 two, two, two each or whatever, whatever I'm trying to remember. 2-1 oh, sorry. Yeah, they were 2-1 up, didn't they? Yeah, sorry. I don't think they deserve to be 2-1 up um, on the sort of, um, the way the game went. But, you know, it's, it's just, listen, I don't really, it is what it is, man. We won, yeah. we won the cup. <laughs> <you know? laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> we, we, we had uh, Lewis uh, on another week and we were asking him, you know, when because he, he'd experienced losing Scottish Cup finals with Hibs before. Yeah. And we asked him, like, when he went to one of the Rangers, were you thinking, oh, fucking hell, like, it's, it's happening mm. again. And he was like, you mm. had that, that, wee, that wee moment of doubt, but then you just, so you just get on with it, you know, and you, you, you go at them. Did, did you have a worry when it went to one that, that we may not get back into it? Not like a, not like a, a, a worry, because um, I think there was like there was still like a bit of time left in the game and stuff like that. It was more like I said, I don't feel we deserve to be two one down mm-hmm. by the way the game went. Um, I think, and obviously it's a holiday strike, wasn't it? That yeah, it's just a two one and. You know, you watch it back and you're like, I, it's a great strike and he couldn't put it anywhere else. And it's one of them guns where you go, what's it like? You've got how, however many minutes left now, like you just have to go for it. And like I said, the boys, I can't remember a time when I was there that we, we gave up. And I think, like I said, that was the, that was just the, that was just that vibe at the time. I think that was that hips. Yeah. I think that, I don't know what happened before my time there or whatever, but my experience there was always, it was always a positive sort of, we're going to win games by a bit, weren't Do you know what I mean? There was never, you know, it didn't get to a point where you was doubting anything. It just, you leave it all out there and if, it, if, it, if it's good enough, if it's good enough. And on that day, it was good enough. Uh-huh. I've got this wee uh, bell ringing that says that during that period when, when Hibs were in the championship, that we had this bit of a hallmark about scoring goals late. So even if we were behind, it was we had this hallmark of playing right up until the final whistle and yeah. getting goals late in games. And I wonder if that played a factor as well. I don't know. I mean, like I said, I think when you're, when you're a team that don't stop, until the final whistle goes, then you're always in it with it, always in it with a chance of scoring goals. And we had quality enough players and created enough chances to always create one more chance, to create one more chance. And I think even after if you take if you go back to that League Cup final, I think even after we conceded the two the second goal from Ross County, I think we had two or three that, yeah. good good chances yeah, yeah. after that. So it, it wasn't a case, like I said, of oh, we've lost the game because it was so late on. We we still fought and fought and fought. And I think, like I said, that was just a running theme in a lot of my time at his. And what's your, uh, what's your memory of the winner? I was stood next to Paul Hanlon in the stand because Paul, I went off. Oh, Paul yeah. Then came, Paul came off injured. Um, and I just remember, obviously, the corner just before and then that one and like where we were we were looking as Dave obviously connected and the, you, we were literally right behind it as it's gone like obviously 
from the dugout part, but you could see when it just fired in the net. And you just remember, I remember seeing John Doolan dart down the <laughs> down the touchline. Just obviously the fans that were to my right just erupted. Paul, obviously ridiculously ecstatic. Do you know what I mean? Even though he was injured, he was up and you know, and I just remember the just the noise and the the big huddle in the corner, the policeman getting <laughs> ragdolled out the way. And, do you know what I mean? Like all those little things that, and at that point, like the to score a goal that late on of that magnitude is it you can't you can't even describe it. It's just one of those moments where I mean I've. I think I remember seeing a video of, of Stubbsy and like, it must be such a weird feeling for like a manager because like, even though you've like, think right, that could be actually be the winner. Like you still have, yeah, I think you still have that little bit of like, like this, this is still, there's still some game to play. So yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, whereas when you're a fan or a player or Dave, you just, you just lose your, and then it's getting your head back on after to make sure that the job gets done. When you realised it was David Gray that scored, did you think back to your conversation the night before in the hotel, or were you just lost yeah, we, in the noise? Yeah, obviously, no, you don't. Yeah, you get lost in that moment. But I mean, there's a picture. I think there's a picture of me and Dave, and we've like we're cutting each other. And we think we've got the cut, and I'll have to I'll have to find it. Um, I think I've put it on one of my socials somewhere, and like we're actually like almost looking at each other. Like, and I remember having like, we were actually saying at the time we we're talking about that actual conversation in the picture. I think we're smiling at each other like we're smiling at each other like two lovesick teenagers the way we're looking at each other. But, um, it's one of my it's one of my favourite pictures from the, the Scottish Cup. And what, what was your favourite moment of the, or, or memory of that day? Of the Scottish Cup day? Yeah. Uh, I would probably say that of that day it was probably Obviously, lifting the cup was probably. It was just that that moment where you've like all that effort you've put into a season, all that hard work, uh, all the doubt that everyone was like, "Ah, oh, they've chucked the league cup, they've chucked the league." Like we did. Like I've said it before in interviews and other podcasts. I said that season, if we had gone without winning something, it would have been one of the. We deserve something that year. Yeah, and we got it. And we got what everyone or majority of hip fans, or every hip fan would probably say was the, the biggest one. And we got it and we deserved it. And you earn it, we earn it. We, we can't be taken off that, that trophy. You can't be taken out of that team, that squad that did it. So it's a great thing, great feeling. The yeah, next nice. day was pretty good. <laughs> the leaf walk, the leaf walk scenes. Was um was pretty uh special to see that many people and the photos from that day. It's it's incredible. Was that when the magnitude of it hit you when you see the parade? I, and the, I think so. Yeah, because obviously at the stadium, you know what's hand them fifty is it fifty thousand fifty thousand. So you're only seeing and obviously it's you've obviously got corporate there. Then you've got half and half and. So when you get back to Edinburgh and you see the city, like we, I mean, I, obviously I knew Hibs, um, Edinburgh's a big city, Hibs a big club within it. And, but until you see that physically with your eyes, it's, it was definitely yeah, amazing. Real, real good. I think it's, it's without doubt probably the best, my best day in football, like best achievement as in just, the size, what you could see, what it meant, the the whole day, the noise when we got down to Leaf Links and all that bit there, just just huge. I quality, I remember, remember it well. It's it's good talking about it because you just picture it all. It all comes kind of right, you do, yeah. right back. You it's do. amazing. I, I've got nothing to say right now. I'm just in a different <laughs> place entirely. <laughs> you like, oh. I know it is like that though. You know when you, when you look back, and I remember being on on the bus on on Leaf Walk and. Like looking and, and you just couldn't see any pavement because it was just heads and people just walking alongside, people hanging out of the windows. 
out of the apartments and sitting on roofs of shops and everything. And like I said, until you stop and look back and think about it, all, you, you, you do generally, not, you don't forget about it, but it just like it sort of just simmers away. But then when you actually take the time to look back, if you look back at photos, if you look, I've got multiple videos from my, myself filming it on the day. Yeah. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's, it is, it's, it's unbelievable. And were you out on a, a three day bender after it, like some of the, some of the boys were, or were you better behaved? <laughs> no, we was, yeah, it was a, it was a good three days after that, like, <laughs> <laughs> I think I had my suit. I think I had my suit on for about two, two or three days in a row. I don't think I took my. I've got out of my suit for two days. Is it still least. standing up somewhere? I think so. <laughs> so there's a, a no ma- of Martin Boyle just li- lying on the steps. So uh, you know, it was yeah, somewhere there, at one point as well. He's not beside. Yeah, anything. there's um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was just like I said. If you speak to any any player that was involved that day or any staff member that was involved, it's just, yeah, it's it's. And it's, it's, and it, you can't explain it really until yeah. like you can get a vibe, but I think it's just you know. Aye, and then the we'll just we'll, we'll quickly. I'm pretty sure we could have kept you a bit longer than we said we would. Leave right. um, Fine, don't bother me. The 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 next season, Stubbs leaves. Was that a shock? I don't really. I mean, it, he'd obviously done what he needed to do. Um, obviously we hadn't got ourselves back to the. The Premier League yet and you know the club made the choice to do what they did and you know we, we like we knew that we had the, the squad there to do it and that season obviously we didn't have the as much competition because obviously Rangers and Hearts had, had gone so it was our time and we knew we had to we knew we had the squad to do it and we just had to to do it. Was it easier not having to think about winning the Scottish Cup like without having that monkey on your back? Nah, not really, not nah. not for me anyway, not personally. Nah, like like I said, it, it was never really a case of I never went out in a Scottish Cup game for Hibs before we won it and thought, oh my god, Scottish Cup, like we better win. Like I just didn't have that feeling. But I don't know whether that's just the sort of character I am. But nah, I just get out there and play a game in it. <laughs> <laughs> and what what was Lennon like when he came in? Good. Um, I, I remember his. I remember his first. His first meeting, and and you could tell straight away that what he expected of you, um, what he knew that he he knew the job he had to do and how he was going to do it, and he did it. I mean, he's a great great motivator, in my opinion. Um, wants to win. He's a winner. He's a winner, and if he doesn't win, it hurts. And I think that's another. Another sort of string to the bow that um, that he put into to Hibs, that 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 winning, mm-hmm. that it needs to hurt every single time if you lose. We had um, so we had Marvin on and, and Lewis, and they talked about um, Lennon's team talk ahead of the the, the derby, where we would just come off a bad result against Wraith, and then mm. uh, played Hearts next. And it's quite a memorable uh, team talk. Were there any other of his, his team talks that, that stand out for you? Uh, yeah, there's plenty. <laughs> plenty of team talks. Um, so like I said, you can tell, you, you know what Neil Lennon's like. Everyone knows what he's like. He's a passionate guy. He wants to win. If things aren't going right, he tells you it's not going right. And you have to, you have to be big enough and you have to be big enough to be able to take it. And put it right, yeah. Because if if you're not if you're not right, if you're not gonna or you're not gonna do what he wants, then you're not gonna get you're not gonna do well under him. But we had that team, like I said, that team squad. Everyone was in it together, and I I I, I don't apologise for repeating myself all the time. But there was something about that team, and when I said I well, I talk about it to this day with Martin. I talk about it with Jace. I talk about I spoke about it with Dave. Um, so yeah, that's just my opinion. But like I said, everyone might say that about the team they played and that did well. But it was that like, it had that vibe. So 
Lewis did a really good impersonation in your Lennon. Do you think you could do one? No. <laughs> <laughs> you say real, really really nah. good. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> we had a, a, a wee European run as well. Who was playing in Europe? Yeah, that was good. Um, remember the first was it the first leg when we played Bromby, wasn't it at home? Yeah. And the Lino. Was, did we score a good? Was it? We, we scored the goal, and the boy scored, scored a goal given offside, and he was never in a million years yeah. offside. Do you know what? Right, it was just one of them things that you know. It's, it's, whether it was in the early qualifying rounds or whatever, it 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 was still an achievement for us for that group at the time. It was just another achievement that we achieved, and you look back and go, "Well, we did that. We just we earned this." And you know, the the game back there. I mean, went to penalties, so, and no one gave us a hope going over there, if we're honest. And I remember yeah. it going, we went all the way to extra time and boys were shattered because obviously I think we'd had a shorter, we'd had a shorter break because we'd gone so far in the Scottish Cup and we were back and, you know, it's, and it's, a, and it's the next, and it's a good level up. It's a level up from what you're used to. So you're playing against stronger athletes, better footballers. And it's a, it's the next challenge on on that sort of everything. Football's all about challenges, and it's it's how you you deal with them. What, what um so the European run aside, then we obviously got promoted. What are your what were your highlights for that promotion season? I don't know. Just that we we finally got it done. It's just one of them moments where it's like, yeah, man, we just got it. Like we've. We've achieved the the goal that was at the start of obviously, like I said, getting him back into the Premier League. And like I said, it took three years or the third season. But you know, it's we had again, we were the best team in that league. And we just we knew we just had to get it right. And we didn't make it we didn't we didn't make it as easy as what it could be, but mm-hmm. we got we got the job done. Um, you know, we we had to use the whole squad that season, I believe. I remember there was a few injuries in that. And I was going to say, yeah. did you not pick up an ankle injury during the game against, I want to say Dunfermline? Yeah, it was Dunfermline, yeah. Yeah, Dunfermline, yeah. Um, so, like, like I said, we we had we had challenges. We had we had obstacles in that season, um, but like, we got the job done. We got the team back to where it needed to be and and it was party time again which is a good it was a, like I said and the, the whole time there we always had it was always something that was good about a season like I know like the first year we didn't get out of the league but that was the the sort of the, the start of the, the rise again and mm-hmm. you know we had the I mean because we were talking about this the other day we were talking about like the kits and that and so I, I always call my first year the dark green kit the dark green year. We had the, that was when we had the dark green with the yeah. black sock yeah. and the white. That was the worst. And then we obviously, yeah. And then right. we, and then we go back to the classic, you know, proper green and white and and then the purple yellow kit. I remember the kits. The kits are. I say you always remember. I think. Do you know what I mean? I remember the the purple yellow one when we played. I think we played Rafe. We played Rafe away and we wore the purple yellow. I think it, it was. Yeah. In the cup. Is that the one with the uh, Malongas in the top corner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Dad scored. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, like, you just these are just little things that, like, when you start thinking back, you remember like little things from different games, and you know, it's like I said, we had odd scores and we overcome them, and it's just a credit to the rest of the the rest of the boys. And what happened then when you when you left Hibs? Because you 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 you're obviously you know not Hibs now. You you left Dundee, so you went mm-hmm. to, to Ross County. Then was that was that your choice, or, or was it just a case of your time being up at Hibs? Um, it was probably a bit of a bit of both, to be honest. Um, I'd I'd had an injury um, that I'd gone that I'd come back from, and then in my game in the game back from there, the game my so one of my first games back from the long term injury. I did the same. I did the same thing, but on the other leg, and um, I was out again for maybe three, four months again. I think it was. And so by the time I got back into training, which I think it was around about December time, 
Um, I just obviously was sort of down the pecking order, out of game practice and all that sort of stuff. And uh, and obviously I was at the time I was like I said I've always want, I just want to play games. Yeah. Like I want to play I want to play football matches. Um, and obviously it came to transfer window time and uh, Neil learned. I think we was we went abroad in the January. I think we went somewhere in the January for like a training camp in the winter break, I think it was. And Neil Lennon spoke to me and said that Ross County had been on the phone, asked me about what has gone loan to the end of the season there and stuff like that. And um, I just sort of said, obviously I wanted to play games and obviously I wasn't going to be, be able to get much game time in. And I, at that time, I was nowhere near ready to just to be, like, just, I just didn't want to be a, a squad player. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? At that time. Um, and I, that's just the type of person I am. I wanted to go and play games and stuff like that. And uh, so I ended up going to Ross County until the end and I signed like a short-term deal at Ross County. Uh, and then, because I think they were, they were sort of just at the bottom of the Premier League. So I went there and then I think Coyle ended up getting let go and then Kettlewell and Ferguson obviously got the co-manager's job to try and keep, keep us up and we got relegated. But then obviously I'd, sort of done enough to um that the managers wanted me there to be part of that that rebuild um and obviously we went down and then got back up the next year for the first time with Ross County yeah mm, <laughs> good <I know. laughs> uh, and, and, and then you, you're at Dundee so there's a, a good few Hibs connections at Dundee as well so James McPay yeah there is it Charles Scott Robertson I think you said yeah. coaching and uh, Jason there um yeah you, you enjoying it there yeah, loving it. Um, loving it. Um, obviously, uh, the Jazza rang me um, when I decided to terminate my contract at Ross County, and then I was I was out, I was doing nothing for I was just keeping myself ticking over for a few weeks, and Jazza rang me and just said, "Do you wanna do you wanna come and train down here?" and but to be fair, before that, um, I was out. I was. I did a uni course. I did a university. Um, I did a university uh, course with um, a few other players, like throughout Scotland, and um, uh, Lee Miller and uh, McCracken were on it. Yeah. Full cut uh, gaffers, and they sort of gave me a phone call, and knew I was cause obviously with they'd seen we'd obviously been meeting on Zoom call for our uni course, and they knew I'd left Ross County. And they said, like, if you want to take over, to so come and train with us for a bit. So I went down, I was training with Fulkert first for probably a week or two. And then Jazza rang me and said, do you want to come train at Dundee? Like, I'd, I'd want you to, I want, I'll, I'd like to sign you. But, so I went down and trained and then pretty much got the deal done and started playing straight away. I think one of my first, I think my first actual start was against Hibs in the, yeah, it would have been yeah because I came yeah, on against up. yeah I came on against air away and then my first game and then yeah then I, I hadn't played any football that season um or well, this season I hadn't played any football actually any competitive football so that was my first competitive game against Hibs and it's always nice to play East Road so I enjoyed that yeah what, what was your uh, what were your impressions Abs because we played or Abs played Dundee twice this season so what, yeah what, what did you think as I think I think the proof's in the pudding of how well they're doing. It's it's a it's a well it's it's a well oiled machine. I think at the moment. I think they've got. I think what I think it's it's got what sort of Hibs has, has had now for the past however many years. There's always threats. There's 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 goal threats everywhere. You've got good young. You've got youth in there. You've got experience in there. You know it's you got a good another good manager in there. And Hibs, yeah, I won't ever say bad words about Hibs because for me it's one of the. I love my time at Hibs. You know what I mean? And like I said, I, I was gutted to leave Hibs at the time, yeah. um, because obviously my memories there. But my my desire to just want to keep playing games, and like I said, I weren't at the age then to start slowing down. And I mean, I'm obviously 35 now, but I mean, I'm still playing week in, week out now. So you know, it was. Definitely the right decision for me to make. Do you know what I mean? And 
and that's that's what I wanted to do, so I did it. You could have partnered uh, Darren McGregor um, at the back for how it was could have been a combined age uh, seventy year old. <laughs> I know, yeah, I know. Um, oh, listen, it's football's football, and and you you move on, and I I leave Hibs or left Hibs with probably some of the best years of my career, sort of in my in my locker and as in the best sort of like achievement feeling, you know, like what we, what we achieved. And, you know, I love, like, I love my time there. I mean, when, even when I did the whole, like my, when we did the whole outside the box stuff and, um, which then I went on to do the, the Liam Fonte meet stuff and all that sort of, like all that sort of stuff for me come from, from hips. So I'll be forever grateful for that club. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. We'd be uh, forever grateful to you as well, Liam. Come on. <laughs> Just uh, speaking of outside the box, I did actually put together a couple of uh, Fontaine of Knowledge questions, if you're interested. What if I get them wrong? <laughs> I'm out, I'm uh, don't out, worry, they're, they're, they're daft, honestly. Um, right, so, one. first one is, you scored two goals for Hibs, according to Wikipedia. One of them was against Ross County in that League Cup final that you mentioned earlier. Who was the other one against? I think that must be wrong then because I scored against Rafe and I scored against Arbroath as well. Ah, but it's Wikipedia. It's the internet. I know, uh, but I'm the Fontaine of knowledge. So I've uh, <laughs> 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 um, so other question I was going to ask was um, yep. your highest value on the website transfermarket.co.uk was 11.13 million. True or false? False. <laughs> ah, it was false. It was uh, 1.13 million. 1.13, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Um, Life Lessons was a 2018 single that you released. What was the name yep. of the song that you released when you were at Hibs? Coming straight out of Leaf. Yeah, it was. That was me. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> that was my three <laughs> questions. <laughs> Bloody hell. Don't give up your day job. <laughs> well, we had, a, we had a couple of questions in for uh, for, for listeners, no many. Um, the, the first one isn't a question, it's from Debbie Gray. She said, uh, to just tell you that you're a big, beautiful, bearded legend. So, <laughs> thanks, okay. Debbie. Um, thanks, Charlie, Debbie. Charlie Walker said, if you'll come back one day as a coach. Oh, the opportunity arose. You just, I don't know what will happen once I've finished and, you know, of course, I just don't know what's going to happen in, in football in the future, do you? So. Yeah. Is coaching something you're, you're wanting to do after you, you finish playing? Yeah, I've, I've done my um, UEFA B and I'm just completing my UEFA A in the June because obviously it got delayed for COVID, so that's all in the pipeline. So And obviously when I was at Ross County, I actually, me and Don Cowie coached our under 18s. Uh, nice sort of dip my dip my toe in that as well. I think we're still on then for the uh, the Bartley Gray McGregor and now Fontaine management quartet, the dream team. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so Martin Merkalf said uh, to ask you who your toughest opponent was when you were in Scotland. Martin boy, he's a good lad, Martin. Isn't he? Yeah, say that, um, say the interview. I know uh, my toughest opponent in Scotland. Um. I don't know, because I've had two spells. I remember my first game in Scotland, right, for Kilmarnock was against Celtic, and it was when Neil Lennon was actually playing in the game. And it was when they had, I think, I think Hearts and Sutton were still there at that time as well. So if right. I was to go for the old school kind of vibe, then one of those, one of them, definitely. Did they um, you not care about the play, sir? The Gladys. Well, I, I, I was that. Like I said, you think you're a big lad and you're this skinny little t- teenage stick body against <laughs> players like Big Chris Sutton and, and Hart. Then I, I think I'm pretty sure they were playing in that game. I'll, I'll have to try and dig out the team sheet or look look up the game. But if I remember rightly, I remember Lennon playing. So be about the same time. What about uh, the club side you've enjoyed playing for most? This is still from Martin and your career to date and why. Um. I don't know, you know, that's a, 
obviously, like I said, this whole interview of my time at Hibs was, was massive. Um, loved, I've loved, I loved every minute of it. I don't think I've had one sort of negative spell or negative time at Hibs. So Hibs in, in, in that sense and obviously the fans and my connection with the fans and all the stuff that I've sort of achieved and come from from being a, a Hibs player. Um, but I've had, I've had great times at all the clubs. Like, like I said, I'm one of these guys that when I'm at your club, I, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm all in. Like, yeah. I give, that's the type of person I am. So you, you get 100% all the time and I, and I buy into to what to what is wanted, um, to what is needed. And, you know, it's one of those things where I had great times. My times at all my clubs have, have, have been good. And But as far as like having a sustained period and the whole time sort of being positive, bar injuries, uh, hips for sure, yeah. Nice one. Uh, Sean Rayburn said, if you could sing with any other footballer, who would it be and why? <laughs> <laughs> um, I have not got a clue. Um, I said, uh, <laughs> I don't really, really have a clue. But, uh, <laughs> sing with another footballer. Anyone, anyone that wants to sing, let's do it. <laughs> there's a there's a photo here. So this is from Andrew McGreary, and, and I don't know if the photo will come across on the, the Zoom. So apologies if it doesn't. Right. He says, "Why are you so scared of champagne?" And it, this this is I don't know if you, if you can make that if it's too bright. Is Put, it looking... Put it a bit closer. Put a bit closer. All right. Looking, okay. looking scared of the, the have the dressing room. Probably because I probably got about two bottles worth in my eyes by that point, <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't see. <laughs> and and then last one, uh, Tom Tom Fairness, who's my dad, asked you if uh, if you agree you left Hibs at least a season too early. He thinks you could have done an extra season was. Hmm. Uh. Yeah, I, I believe I could have, um, but at, like I said, um, at that time I was I was out down the pecking order, and um, like I said, I, I was going to leave. Um, I would have happily stayed at Hibs for the rest of my rest of my career, but it wasn't meant to be, and I left. And but I've always I'll always go back. So, and I've always you know it's, it's one of them things where you come away from a club and you. You sort of become a fan. That's the that's the sort of vibe I got from my time at Hibs. Yeah, it's, it's good. I think obviously winning the cup helps, but I think definitely for, there are the, a, a lot of players for that time who would be welcome back at Easter Road. You know, no matter the circumstance, whether it's with a, an opponent or you know after playing mm-hmm. these are finished, where, where the fans are always yeah. going to have a like a, a place yeah. in heart for for them. So, well, I've been back there. I've been back there a few times, and every time I've gone back, it's always been sort of positive. It's always been great to go back and see faces that I've known and 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 fans that I know. I, I know a few fans personally um, off the pitch now. Um, obviously, Martin uh, Metcalf being one. Um, so when you see those players and you see, uh, see those people and you see the the staff that you you sort of knew and and things like that, it's it's it's, it's good. It's great. Excellent. So. Um... I suppose just the last couple of minutes of the show, then we'll just very quickly look back at the, the, the game yesterday. It seems like a lot longer ago than yesterday, Johnny, that, that it happened. Uh, Hibs 4 0 winners at Stranraer. Uh, what were your thoughts on the game, John? I just job done. Move on to the next round. Um, don't have long to wait for it. Um, hopefully, I saw signs that we were going to finish the season strong. Um, I think we've talked about the last couple of weeks with a couple of additions to the team, you know, like uh, Jackson Irvin coming in and trying to work out the the combination between him and uh, Joe Newell, and that seems to be still seems to be working itself out, but for the better. So, like I say, yeah, hopefully finish the season strong, finish um, towards the the Scottish Cup final, hopefully with a chance of winning it again. Liam, how, how difficult are games like that when you're you're expected to win against a lower league op- opponent? Very difficult. Um, we had one earlier this season where we, we played uh, Bonnyrigg in the cup um, at Dundee, and it went all, I think it went it went all the way to extra time. I think it went extra time. Did it go extra time? Well, no, we scored. I can't remember. We played that many games recently. Yeah. But they like you know it was a it was a good game. Um, lower league team, non league team, expected not to win, and. You know, I, I'm I'm never watching that 
I saw that game or some of the game yesterday, like I said earlier, and you know, very professional performance from him. You know, they went and went about it the right way. Um, and it wasn't one of those, you know, the typical sort of like, you know, the classic cup game sometimes where the lower league team do cause a bit of an upset um, that we've seen in the cup this year. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, you catch my drift. So, uh, you know, <laughs> no, I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, no, but do, do you know what I mean? That, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. it, was, it was fresh performance. They weren't expected. They were expected to go and win, and, and they went about it the right way, and and can't to be won the game. Um, and to be fair, like they're definitely a mirror shot of obviously making it to the all the way to the the final. And uh, the 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 pleasing thing for Hibs fans to know is they've got Boyle, Dodge, and Nisbet kind of having a bit of form all together at, at once. As a defender, what's it like being up against a, a front three like that? Yeah, I've done it a couple of times. Um, very, like I said, you got you got match winners all over the pitch at, at Hibs. You got uh, Boiler who can who can win you a match on his own sometimes. Um, Doidge is a very very good forward, um, all action forward, very very good in the air. And then obviously you got Nisbet who, who's obviously with his Scottish um, call up and all that sort of stuff. He's young talent, find knows where the net is. So you've got You've got three out with obviously the, the the other players you've got in the squad. You've got three very very capable match winners in your team, and if you get one of them firing on a day, it's quite likely you're going to win. If you get all three firing on a day, you're going to blow teams away. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's a it's a good it's a good place to be. Cool, uh, John. We've got Livingston on Wednesday. Prediction for that. 2 0 Hibs. 2 0 Hibs. Yeah. Uh, Liam, you've got Inverness tomorrow. What's your prediction for that one? We'll see. We'll see. Right, I'll put that down as a Dundee one. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, when tomorrow put you in a really good position for a playoff, do you, do you fancy Dundee's yeah. chances of going up? Yeah, we've. we've... We, we we know what we've got. We know the we know the the ability we've got, and you know we first we got to get the job done and, and secure the playoff spot. And then I don't really. I mean, I think obviously we know from my time at Hibs that finishing second or third, fourth doesn't really make a difference because obviously you got the extra games in there. Yes, but we had to wait around to play our playoff game, and it and it probably not hindered us, but do you know what I mean? You're waiting about for, for games. and So if you're on a good run and you're on a good bit of form, it's always good to keep keep the, the machine rolling. So, you know, first we've got to get the job done uh, and then we'll see what happens after that. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, that's us Thank you very much. Out, out of time for the night. Uh, Liam, it's been absolutely amazing having you on. Thank you so much for, uh, for, no problem. for joining us. We, we, we genuinely really appreciate it. Um, John, you were here. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll be back on Thursday for uh, short bangers to so send us in your questions on Twitter for that and then we'll be in fact John will be back on Wednesday for quick bang after the living game and then short bangers on Thursday so I won't be no you'll not be lazy um, you're welcome to join us if you want uh, in the meantime thanks very much for listening we'll catch you next time So oh, in the trail me down when I broke free I drank all the whiskey in Tennessee I don't drink water, no, 